What's good, YouTube? It's Mirrorboy Squiddy, back again with another Squiddio. Let's talk about Purely and actually how to beat this deck, because this is a very popular deck pre-Dune, and now with Duelist Nexus released, we actually got the last missing piece to the deck being a key component of the metagame at tier one status, and that's actually a Purely Noir. This was a missing item that deck needed, which pairs with Purely Sleepy Memory. Previously, when you had Sleepy Memory as a Purely player, you would have no way to actually rank up using it. It was only used for the purpose of drawing a card. Then now you actually have the option of using a Pure Lily or a regular Purely to rank up into an E Purely Noir anytime that you actually have Purely Sleepy Memory. And on top of being able to draw with the effect of Purely Sleepy Memory, you actually have a nice removal spell too. It says once per turn as an ignition effect, you can discard one card, then target one card your opponent controls or up to two cards if this card has Purely Sleepy Memory as material, which 9.99999 times out of 10, they will have as a material. So this card does a lot, but the part that really scares us is the fact that it has the effect, a quick effect, when you activate a purely quick spell, you can attach that card on the field to this card as material, and then you can set a purely trap directly from your deck. So they're gonna go for purely leap, which means that they're instantly able to draw a card in the standby phase, then purely leap, rank up into X purely nor, and then draw another card at least. If they have any other way to get multiple sleepy memories onto the table, onto the body, then the game's pretty much over because they're gonna be drawing at least four cards. So that's why this deck is really scary. It's done very, very well in this past weekend at the Remote Duo Extravaganza. So let's dive in without further ado. Starting off, Ash Blossom Joy Spring. This is actually a very, very powerful card against deck. Now, you don't want to blindly Ash anything, but it does depend on your hand. What I usually like to actually Ash is probably my friend Purely because of the sheer fact that Purely Delicious Memory is at one, and this prevents them from having the 33% chance of getting it to their hand to make plump, and then that just gives us an easy access to Noir. Or alternatively, if they are going for the Sleepy Memory play, which is probably a little better, I think, generally, uh, then that means that you're preventing them from getting a copy of Sleepy Memory, which is like the main starter now on the deck, giving them access to the trap, giving them access to the full combo and being able to draw cards. And the reason why I like ashing this is because my friend Purely is once per turn. If you ash something like a Pure Lily and then they already had hard drawn the my friend Purely, then that means they're still gonna be able to use the effect and then add what they wanted to. Now, other things you can actually ash are the quick play spell cards, but only if it's a whittled down game state where you're kind of like, okay, well, they only have like three cards in hand and they just activated Purely Sleeping Memory. I should probably stop this because they're going to discard a card, but that probably means that they don't have another quick play spell card. Or for example, if they have a copy of the Purely XYZ on the table where they're trying to chain that quick effect to attach it as a fifth material to get into Noor, then we would definitely go ahead and Ash that spell. So then that means they cannot respond because these quick effects have to respond directly to the quick spell that they're activating. So just key things to note there. If they are playing some of the pot cards, pot of desires, pot of extravagance, then you could potentially also, um, pot of prosperity rather, you could potentially also consider actually hitting this if they go for six. But again, that does depend on certain things, depends on your hand. If you already have something like Drone Lockbird, obviously you might just want them to add and then you can resolve a drill, so on and so forth. Speaking about Drone Lockbird, I actually don't think this card is that good against this deck. Now, you guys probably think I'm crazy, but the thing is with this deck, it's really, really grindy and card advantage really matters. If you're playing at a disadvantage against this deck, it's not very great. Now, there are some moments where you can actually catch some off guard with the Drone Lockbird. If their hand is awkward and they go like normal summon Pure Lily, add my friend, then of course Drill is good there. But a lot of the times they are going to be able to play in their draw phase to circumvent the Drone Lockbird with the effect of Purely Sleepy Memory as well as Purely Happy Memory, which can just be freely activated when there's no cards on the table. And then that means they're doing a chunk of their plays in their draw phase. So in their main phase, your Drone Lockbird is more or less the neg one for you. If they've already had access to purely sleepy memory, then that means they're going to be able to rank up into purely nor and then already set the trap. So now you're playing with a five card hand against an purely nor that's drawing a card and then an X purely nor that's drawing another card. So that's why I don't really like Drone Lockbird against it. But if you're already main deck and Drone Lockbird because it's already decent against the wide array of decks in the metagame, then it's all right. Like it's usable game one. But personally, I would definitely side it out game two unless you're playing like a heavy combo deck where you actually rely on high impact blanket cards and then you only have a low count for non-engine so you kind of have to bank on these cards resolving in order to play then by all means side it in but personally in a deck that plays a lot of hand traps like chimera or um Kastira, i don't really like this card against purely that's my personal opinion now nibiru is not completely dead against this deck a lot of people say 
that Nibiru is completely dead, but a lot of times they do actually go into five summons, especially if they have to uh, leverage cards like the Princess Sprite in order to see more of their spell cards in order to have the extra spell card to chain on top of their Eperly Plump, for example, to rank up into Expertly Noir. Uh, a lot of times they actually do end up going in this combo anyways. Now you can still catch them off guard with a Nibiru. If they're only playing one e purely plump, sometimes that really hurts because then they have no way to make a second one, even though they're able to add back three quick play spell cards with the effect of my friend purely. Obviously we would never side Nibiru against this deck, but I'm saying if you're main decking it already, it's not going to be always dead. You can often catch them in like weird moments where it actually gets a lot of value. Even though they're able to add back up to three quick play spell cards, they're already burning through a lot of resources as well. They're limited number of purely's in the deck obviously they can shuffle it back with purely leap but that's just like extra things that they have to do they probably can't do it turn one unless they discard a purely leap so it could actually benefit you on the following turn where a lot of the resources are actually gone now you do have to watch out that straight purely street also triggers as well so they are able to follow up with another purely monster but again it depends on when you can catch some of the nib if you can just get it out of your hand and then get the nib body on board that's always decently good as well so you have the 3k beater against this deck anyways to threaten things like the e purely beauty that might be on the table after the smoke clears from nip another card that i've kind of been hyping up is retaliating c because it's decently good against some of the other decks with the fusion spells hint hint nudge nudge but this card is actually decently good against purely because of the pseudo d shifter what it does is you can respond to any of the quick play spell cards that special summon and then on the chain retaliating c will special summon and then the effect of the quick play will resolve they'll either have to banish a card from their hand or they'll resolve without effect Either way, they're still going to get the quick play spell cards going to be banished because cards stay on the table until the chain resolves. So as chain link one is resolving, a retaliating C is already on the board. So that means when it resolves, it will hit the banished pile as well. So purely sleeping memory would say goodbye. And it's really annoying for that deck to actually get rid of these cards. Obviously, they do have the um, generic way to get it out, which I can think of is e purely beauty using the effect to negate the effect of retaliating C and then attaching the retaliating C to that body by sending something to the graveyard, but it still gets a little bit of value. So I think it's decently good. It's not like super amazing, like game breaking by any means, but it's decently good. And if they don't have any access to beauty, it could really, really be a harsh punishment for them. Speaking of banishing cards, Shifter is actually another card that's really, really powerful. If you're playing a D Shifter deck like Cash Tiro or something of the sort, then Shifter can actually hurt this deck quite well. Even though they don't really rely on their graveyard, the only thing that is kind of like purely Lily that kind of has to target something, even shutting this off though is giving you some value, right? You're shutting off the purely Lily effect, you're shutting off potential plump effects to attach, and you're shutting off a lot of the resources that are normally hit their grave for the follow up on your turn. When you get rid of their XYZ monster, it means they're not adding anything back from my friend purely so that's always a good thing in my opinion i would definitely side a d shifter against this deck if you are playing something like cash Shira because it does do a lot for you it makes your turn a lot weaker and i think there's a lot of value in playing card like that effect failure infinite impermanence and ghost mourner are actually very good against this deck now the one thing to note is that stray purely street prevents you or opponent from targeting any uh level one purely's that are summoned to the table on that turn so you kind of have to gauge what the metagame is. Are people playing multiple copies of Stray Purely Street? <laughs> to my knowledge, yes. I think people are playing two or three. So that means you might want to actually Valor or uh, potentially Imperm a Purely that's summoned out if they're doing it in draw phase, right? Because a lot of times they're going to play around Droll Knockbird. So you have to kind of leverage. Like, obviously, it's good to reserve those cards to hit Purely Lily because that's the one that gets the most value because they're targeting something from the graveyard. But the thing is with Purely, if they're able to add, reveal a copy of Straight Purely Street and add it to hand, or if they already had one in their hand already that they wanted to play around Droll anyway, so they activated their quick play spell cards in the draw phase, and then you say, okay, I'm not gonna imperm right now, they go to main phase, they activate Straight Purely Street, and then your imperm is kind of just chilling in your hand. It doesn't really do anything, right? Because it's just dead for the rest of the turn. So I think in a metagame where people are actually playing two or three Straight Purely Street in their main deck, I would actually argue that it's correct to actually Mourner or Imperm the Purely that's summoned out in the draw phase when they're trying to play around Droll Knockbird, just so you're guaranteed value out of it, right? It means that the Purely is whiffing. They're investing two cards to get the Purely onto the board. That means they have three cards left in hand. So it's kind of like hard. A lot of times this deck is really volatile. 
if you hit them with one Imperm, one Valor, one Mourner, sometimes that could mean their turn just passes, or they end on something very weak, like an Imperially Beauty pass with like a My Friend on the table, right? So it's not great for them. So being able to even get that value guaranteed by hitting the Purely in the draw phase means that you don't really have to deal with the chance that they do have a stray Purely Street, so you don't get punished. And their turn is probably going to be weaker anyways because they've invested multiple cards into summoning that one purely. So their chances of getting the X purely Noir on the table are a lot slimmer than it previously was. So I would definitely argue, uh, but it does depend on the metagame. If people are only playing one straight purely street, then I would probably hold it for the pure lily because you get much more value out of hitting the purely lily because you're preventing them from searching my friend or the trap and you're preventing the rank up from the graveyard. But again, if people are playing multiple copies of the field spell, then we definitely don't want to get greedy and get punished by that. So we do want to probably hit the purely in the draw phase. Now let's talk about some of the board breaker items. There's obviously XYZ Encore. I think this card is actually decently good. Now the basic combo with Ypres Lenore is gonna, they're gonna use the effect to draw in the standby phase, and then they're gonna flip the Purely Leap to rank it up into X Purely Lenore, and then continue to draw because it's still in the standby phase. So what you can actually do with it, XYZ Encore, because it's in the quick play spell card, you can use it in the draw step. So before they get to draw any cards, target the Ypres Lenore, and because neither players can actually respond to the activation of this card, that means that uh, the Ypres Lenore will be spun back, so they will not be drawing two cards minimum, right? They could have been drawing four if they had multiple um, sleeping memories underneath that card. So you're getting a lot of value out of XYZ Encore. Now the caveat is they will get the effect of My Friend Purely, which is unfortunate, as well as the effect of Stray Purely Street, which is also unfortunate. But again, you're preventing them from drawing four cards potentially, right? Like we don't want them drawing in a hand trap, so we want to get rid of the problem card, which is the X Purely Noir. We don't care if they're summoning out a bunch of little purelys on the table, chances are we can either mount a board or potentially just win on that turn by OTKing them because we're going second, right? And we're able to have a battle phase. So that's why I quite like this card. The other thing is it's quite nice against Kestir A Rise Heart in the metagame, which is a popular deck, probably at least tier one, if not still the best deck. But what happens is with A Rise Heart, you banish the materials because they get attached first and then it gets returned. So that means that none of the materials attached to Rise Heart are actually going to summon onto the table, which XYZ Encore does, right? Because they get to special summon the monsters that are detached. So in uh, the case of a Rise Heart, it's actually a one for one. So there's actually some crossover there with the XYZ's Encore. Unfortunately, against Purely, again, they are gonna be able to get multiple Purely Bodges on the table, but you kind of leverage that turn. You're kind of able to probably crack their board because they're not drawing into hand traps and answers. Another card that is really, really good is obviously Triple Tactics Rust because of the fact that this gives you a lot of toolbox to search what you want. You can search things like Harpy's Feather Duster in order to clear your opponent's back roll. So clearing the Purely deck of the straight Purely Street as well as the My Friend is something that you can definitely do. You can also potentially bait out the Purely Leap if you want to, uh, if you have like a Kaiju or some way to get rid of the X Purely Noir. And the other thing is you can also search utility cards like Herald of the Abyss, which you can tech at one in your side deck. This is a card that affects a player, pay 1500 life ones and declare one monster type and attribute. Your opponent must send that a monster with the declared attribute and the type to the graveyard. So we would declare Dark Fairy, and then they would be forced to send the Expertly Noir. Because it affects the player, Expertly Noir cannot protect, and then it gets sent to the grave. Um, unfortunately, the only thing is that if they have a quick play spell card set with the Expertly Noir, they can chain that to summon out a copy of Pure Lily, which is also a Dark Fairy, meaning that on the resolution of the chain, your opponent could potentially just send the Pure Lily to the graveyard and they keep their Expertly Noir. That's the only bad thing with this card but having played purely i will tell you that the card uh, the cards are require a lot of resources in order to get into next purely noir half the time they're not going to have that quick play spell card actually set onto the table because they probably used it on their previous turn to maximum value to maximize adding cards to their hand and maximize the chances of actually making that purely noir so it really is like a rare scenario where they actually have it set and they're able to go into pure lily and i think it's worth it if you're already siding thrust because you're able to just search that utility card at any time that you need the other card is decent Triple Tactics Talent, I think this card is decently good. They're not always going to have five or more materials on X Purely Noir. If you're able to bait out two of the materials and they only have four left or less than five, then you can Triple Tactics to steal and then make a big Zeus on top of it after you're attacking, right? So that's just one way to get rid of it. You can also rip 
cards out of their hand, so ham traps, and then if you have a way to get rid of the XP early Noir, you could just attack for a game. So I quite like this card against this deck because a lot of things are actually triggering the main phase against them because, yeah, all their answers are on their monsters. And then let's talk about the books. Book of Moon and also to a degree, Book of Eclipse are both very, very powerful. In fact, the thing with Book of Moon is if they go in the standby phase with April and Noir, they're gonna draw a card, and if they're greedy, or if their hand allows it, they're gonna flip the Pirelli Leap, which probably nine times out of 10 they will, unless they're trying to play around Book of Moon by big brain 4D chessing you. But when they flip Pirelli Leap in the standby phase, you can chain the effect of Book of Moon. Book of Moon, the target that they're trying to rank up into X Purely Noir, and that means the target's gone, so they are not able to actually make the X Purely Noir with the Purely Leap. The other nice thing is my friend Purely, which a lot of people don't actually know, it only triggers when a face up Purely XYZ monster leaves the field. So that means if it's face down and you somehow get rid of it, obviously not by battle because it would flip on the damage step, but if you had like a Dark Hole or something, then that means it would not trigger the effect of my friend purely to add back the three quick play spells. So that's something that's really, really interesting. Book of Eclipse might even be a little better going second in those scenarios because you can use this in your draw phase, which means just a lot like XYZ Encore, they're not gonna be able to use the effect to draw in the standby phase for their April or Nor or whatever else they have, like a plump. And they can't really chain purely leap. Well, unless they have like something with uh, five materials, then obviously they'd be unaffected. But if they don't have anything, just like an April and Noir with two materials, then you could book the Eclipse and then they don't get that draw on the standby phase either. So it's kind of a juggling act. If they already have something with five materials, then that's a lot worse in Book of Moon because they could just chain to get X Purely Noir, which is unaffected by the Book of Eclipse, and then they continue drawing and they have X Purely Noir. But whereas with Book of Moon, you can wait for them to draw on the standby phase, then they're kind of proactively activating the trap. So you can chain the effect of Book of Moon. Doesn't matter if they have a plump with five materials, that's still getting booked. And then the Purely leap is resolving without effect and then last couple of cards here okay evenly matched is decently good but you do have to pair it with something to get rid of the x purely nor this is card is decently good to get rid of the my friend purely as well as the straight purely street alongside any other cards that they have set but i don't like it that much because they're still able to keep the x purely nor and talking about some go first cards okay if you're playing chimera or like a beast deck king tiger wanghu is definitely cool we kind of showcase this in our other video talking about how you can search this off of the burpa met and then fuse it into the graveyard then use the effect of the chimera to banish and special summon back the king tiger wanghu this basically neuters the purely deck because it destroys all of them when they're summoned to the table other cards are d barrier which is extremely good against this deck because they don't play a lot of links i think the sky striker link maybe some people are playing some other nightmare links potentially but this obviously calling xyz just shuts down their entire turn so it's insane to side this against them going first chain disappearance is another fun card it actually can get rid of all of their purelies or their purelies pure lilies and they cannot actually shuffle them back to recycle with purely leap because it banishes all of them so that's one fun card you could test out with edison card i know but it's a lot of fun and last couple of cards okay anti-spell fragrance and magic deflector okay these cards are decently good anti-spell obviously it forces them to chain all of their cards and they could still add it with zeus or potentially the uh, sky striker azalea i believe so you kind of have to have something to protect it but it's still decently good because it stops a lot of their combo board breakers a lot of them are playing triple tactics talent or thrust or pots so it stops that as well whereas magic deflector can be chained so you guarantee to get the value so if they go draw phase activate a quick play uh, spell card to special summon you chain deflector you're guaranteed to kind of get a one for one trade already because you're responding to something and on top of that for the rest of the turn it's a blanket effect so it will negate the my friend purely it will negate the field spell as well it will negate anything else that they can do to play that turn so that's why deflector kind of has some value there it also has some crossover against other decks like cash tira stopping the field spell stopping birth against so on different decks that play spell cards but anti spell is a lot better against fusion decks and also branded so you kind of have to juggle which is better for your metagame which you find is better for your specific deck so yeah that's about it in the video if you guys have anything i missed definitely let us know in the comments below other than that definitely rate comment subscribe if you can and we'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye